Thanks to QuickBooks for sponsoring this video. And we're gonna part the Red Sea here because this is the number one chile in the Arnie Tex household. Let's make some salsa roja, but not just any salsa roja. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three salsa roja recipes featuring three of the most popular dried chiles in Mexican cuisine. The chile guajillo, the chile ancho, and the chile de arbol. Now these three chiles are dried chiles, which means we'll have to use a little technique to soften them up and release their flavor fully into the salsa. I'll be showing you exactly Exactly how to do that in this video. Vamonos! Hey friends, before we move on to today's recipe, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, QuickBooks, and share a little bit about how they've helped me with my business. So I was super nervous when I first launched the rubs for sale. I had ordered over 3,000 of them, and that was a pretty big risk for me at the time. Now imagine how blown away I was when they sold out in just three days. In that moment, I began to believe that my negocito had potential to be a negociote. At that time, my content was also starting to take off, and the best part was that it was centered around our comunidad, and we weren't just making videos for views anymore. We were sharing tradiciones through an online carne asada. I realized that I wanted to keep creating this representation for our cultura and our people for as long as possible. So part of that meant leveling up my business with QuickBooks to manage my business cash flow, the income, and the expenses all in one place, and pay bills on time. This way, I can really know where my money's going and I can make better business decisions with easy to understand dashboards and reports. That really helps me keep focused on creating the best content possible so I can share these recipes with the next generation. And boom! Just like that, I was running my negocito like a negociote. So I'm sharing this to say that your negocito can be a negociote soon enough with this 50% off discount that QuickBooks is offering for the first three months to those who sign up. To sign up, that link is in the description. First up is gonna be the Guajillo Chile. The Chile Guajillo comes from the Mirasol Chile, which gets their name from how they grow looking up at the sun. When dried, it then becomes chile guajillo. There's actually two types of guajillo. The guajillo puya is smaller and hotter, and I've already got a video about that delicious one, but today we're making one larger version of the guajillo. This chile is the base for dishes like tamales, chile colorado, and carne adobada. Overall, it has a very mild heat level, if any, that's also more rich in flavor. Now for the second salsa roja, we'll be featuring the ancho chile. The fresh version of this chile is the chile poblano, which y'all have probably seen in chile relleno, chile en nogada, or a variety of guisos with rajas. Now once dried, we get the ancho chile, which is mildly sweet, and some folks say it has a plum-like, almost chocolatey flavor, perfect for sauces like mole or an adobo. The heat level of the ancho chile is also more on the milder side, but you might get an occasional hot one sneaking in the mix. Let's see what we get today. Now, we saved the hottest for last, el chile de árbol. Before all the super spicy science experiment craze, this was the OG hot, hot peppers. And to this day, I love drying out some chile de árbol, pulsing it down in my coffee grinder for that extra kick on my caldos menudos, even my tacos. This chile is also known for complementing traditional delicious salsa verde recipes. Fun fact, after drying and dehydrating, they maintain their color, so you might have seen them use their decorations too. But we ain't doing arts and crafts today. We're eating salsa. Vamonos! I'm gonna drop four tomatoes for each salsa here and two garlics for each salsa. All of these are gonna get boiled in here. While that's going on, we're also going to toast our chiles a little bit. I've already rinsed them and deseeded them, so we're gonna roast them a little bit just to get a little extra flavor out of them. You don't wanna really burn them, you just wanna get a nice little roasty toasty going there. So I'm gonna put my press here just to hold that one down. The chile de arbol, you don't have to deseed. You can if you want to. I usually never do. All right, so now we have the onion for all three of them as well. Into the pot of water they go. Let's flippity flip that one, flippity flip this one a little bit. Stir these up a little. When you buy these chiles, you want them to have a little bit of flex. If they're super hard and brittle, you might not quite get as much flavor. That doesn't mean they're bad. You just might not get as much flavor out of them. That's all. All right, they're starting to smoke, so we're just about ready to get them out. All right, our chile de árboles are done. Got a <coughs> nice, roasty, toasty flavor on those. Two different pots here, one for the guajillo and one for the ancho chile. You don't want to boil all the flavor out of them. You just want to soften them up. 
Usually five to 10 minutes is plenty. This is basically two chile ancho and two chile guajillos. It looks like more pieces, but it's because I had cut them in half lengthwise to get all the seeds out. This is 20 chile de arbol. This is for a really, really hot salsa. You know, I'm always playing with different flavors and creating different salsas because I love salsas and all kinds of foods. I made a salsa, basic taqueria, restaurant style salsa. And I thought, I wonder what it tastes like mixing some guajillo in here. And it was super delicious. A few days later, I got the idea like, well, I wonder what it tastes like with just pure ancho on top of the red salsa. It was a completely, completely different flavor profile. But what went through my mind and my palate was this chile, the ancho, probably makes the best adobo. And I know we've made adobo a lot of times with the guajillo, but the flavor of the ancho to me was like, bam, this would be great with pork. We're starting to boil. Let me set my timer for five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my guajillos. We're gonna run that one first. See how soft they are? They change color, they get a little bit opaque. We're just gonna take two tomatoes, drop those in here, and uh, the garlic. So I'm gonna puree this first. That was about a 30 to 40 second puree. I'm happy with the way that looks. I need to give me a little bit of salt in here also. About three quarters of a teaspoon. We're gonna go ahead and, and add our onions and the other two tomatoes. And this water here is from the tomatoes, so we're gonna drop that in there as well. And here's where I like to just pulse, so I have a little texture in my salsa. It smells so good. This is gonna be salsa roja number one for today. Do you see that semi-chunky texture? I love that. I'm not supposed to taste it. My wife says I'm not allowed to. Let's move on to salsa number two. Cause then if I eat my good boy and I don't taste until we get all three, I even get a beer. <laughs> so once again, I'm going to get, in this case, the chile ancho. That's going into the blender first. Looks like we got it all in one ch I mean in one scoop. I'm gonna add two tomatoes and the garlic. So we're gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. I waited before I ever did it, I'm telling you. I have the ability. Look at the color, totally different. Now we're gonna drop our onions and the other two tomatoes. This smells amazing, it really does. The other one smelled great. This smells amazing. That's what I like in my salsa, a little bit of texture. Totally different color, totally different aroma. I will tell you the first thing that hits me is the tomato and then I smell the aroma of the chiles. Let's move on to chile number tres. This is all the chile arbol. We did not boil or soak these chiles. I find that they're small. Oh gosh, they smell so good. That's amazing. So once again, we're gonna put two tomatoes and two garlics and about a teaspoon of salt. A totally different color again. All right, that was about a 40.1 second pull. So we're gonna add the rest of the tomatoes. Woo that one hit me as soon as I pulled the lid off. Woo! <laughs> That's the way I like it. All right, let's add the onion, that little bit of water. Doesn't take much. And we're gonna part the Red Sea here and put the bigger bowl in the middle <laughs> because this is the number one chile in the Arnitex household. So it goes in the bigger middle bowl. Look at that beauty. Beautiful. This is red, this is orange, and this is like a deep red, almost a burgundy reddish color. It's time for my favorite part of every video, the taste test. We're gonna go to the Guajillo first. This is a beautiful, gorgeous red color. And uh, my mouth's actually watering just looking at these salsas. That's super delicious, very, very good. The primary flavor I'm picking up is the tomato, a little bit of garlic. The guajillo's in there, but it's kind of a background. But you can taste it, it's just not that strong. But again, it's supposed to be part of the background of the symphony, right? Not the main ingredient. Let's move on to the ancho and see what we have here. All right, gonna get about the same amount. This looks like a beautiful, rich chocolate That's what it looks like. The aroma on this is actually the strongest one. It's right away. Mm-hmm. Very good flavor. I can taste the ancho a little bit more than I can taste the guajillo, but still the base salsa is the dominating flavor. But again, we're making a salsa, not an adobo. Both of these salsas would be amazing with a little fresh diced onion and a little chopped up cilantro and probably a squeeze of lime. 
Let's move on to salsa number three, the chile de arbol. This one is a beautiful, pretty orange color. You can see the seeds. You can see a little bit of the pepper flakes in this one. Let's give it a taste test. Mm. <laughs> That has an awesome flavor. The chile arbol, of course we use 20 of them, right? It definitely hits you in the face and the palate. It's lingering right now, my head's sweating already. Super good flavor, I can taste the base, the tomato, the onion, and the garlic. Not as strong as the others because the arbol is very hot, very spicy. Again, this could benefit from some fresh diced onions, some cilantro, and probably a squeeze of lime too. Just to give it that extra little kick of flavor. Whew, I probably should have tasted that first so I would have time to let it mellow out. Whew, whew. As a salsa, I'm probably gonna pick the arbol all day long because I do like a little bite in my salsas. I like them to have that little extra punch. Both of these are delicious, they're wonderful. But the arbol chile, it's made for speed, man. It's got the kick. <laughs> and that's what I like. I would definitely doctor that up. The cilantro will really wake up any one of these salsas. Then any one of them would be perfect for your backyard carne asada. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in our American Pitmaster rubs, go to pitmaster.us. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, tell your family and friends about the Ernie Ticks channels and pages to keep the smoke light and make it work. Boom! Oh. Cut, because that arbol made my nose runny.